Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video. Was that trailer something or what? Oh my f- <laughs> Before I go any further, I want to say a massive thank you to every single person uh, who was at my live stream last night, um, you know, just waiting to discuss and talk about the trailer as the hype was building, the intensity, and, you know, I was joined by my friends, uh, RJ, Cobra Kai Nation, King, Yinko, Christian, Strike First Podcast, Talking Cobra Kai, we were all, we were all in there, we were all waiting, and the minute the trailer dropped, we were all there, and the reaction is literally within the live stream, so just go back into that and uh, just watch us revel in it, and we break it down, we go through it, we talk about each frame by frame, shot by shot, about the things that we picked up, the, the nuances, the, the, the little hidden details, what things could mean, what things could hold for the future, so if you haven't seen it, make sure you go and check it out, and to all the newcomer fans who well newcomer family i should say newcomer family who came through that video or that stream welcome to the space welcome to this area and yeah i can't wait for you to you know see what other content comes your way from me to you guys now this sunday watch party for spider-man 3 so make sure you're there okay so within the trailer let's get to the meat and potatoes of what we're all here for i don't I normally don't like leakers, okay? I just want to say this. I normally don't like leakers. I rag on them. I tell them how pathetic they are. But I think in this case, I would give them a pass. Because we have had next to nothing from Sony. And we are literally less than a few months away from release. We have literally had next to nothing. All we've had is rumors and leaks. And that's hence the title and the video, the thumbnail is I think every single leak, or, well, not every single leak, every single rumor that we have seen in regards to this, and, you know, to the person who linked, leaked it, I mean, come on. You know, I mean, I, I have my feelings on leakers, but <sighs> you have to ask, would they have released it yesterday if it wasn't for the leak? You know, I suppose that is that has, is brought into question. The leak probably forced their hand maybe to release it earlier than they wanted to, but who knows. But as far as the rumors go, I think everything is on the table. I think with the um, amount, the little amount of what we got in this trailer, there is a lot that is going to be in this film. A lot. And I think what this film is going to do, and this is the one thing I did want from this movie, was I wanted to focus on Spider-Man's identity being out there. How does that affect him personally? How does that affect him directly? How does that affect those around him? And it's quite clear from the trailer that it's going to address that. You see MJ and Peter fleeing the scene, picking right up after the events of No Way Home. And Peter's face is everywhere. So it's almost like the inverse of Iron Man. I am Iron Man, you know, he did it with swagger, he did it with charm, but ultimately him putting his identity out there, that put his balls on the chocking block. You know, when, it, when he went up against the fake Mandarin, uh, Whiplash, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So it's, it's almost a parallel, but it's a bit more detailed because we're going to see it from purely Peter's perspective. He doesn't live in some rich house somewhere. You know, he's just your average kid who's trying to make it through the day, trying to go to school, trying to live his life. And I got, did anyone else get Batman versus Superman vibes when Superman is walking through um, um, the t towards the town hall through the people and they're calling him a false god? It, it's very similar to that. It's almost as if people are rejecting him. It's almost as if people are blaming him for stuff. And, and, and the weight is being shifted to him. And it's a newfound responsibility that he has, not just to himself, but to everyone around him. You know, everyone. Ned, MJ, his aunt, uh, Happy. Those people are going to be the ones that are more affected, more so than himself. And I think that's what this film is about. At least for the first... I'd say first... The, the film's going to be split into three acts. The first act is going to be dealing with the fallout of No Way Home and how Peter's adapting. The second act is where Doctor Strange and him go into the multi... Uh, you know, they, they mess around with the multiverse and this whole thing just comes... It just comes full circle. And the third act is going to be the payoff and the big setup. So I think as much as we're going to get a final battle in this movie, I think the final battle will have a payoff, but to a point. It won't be a final battle and then that's it. The good guys go home. You know, Spider-Man go back to their respective universes and the villains go back to their respective universes. I think this is going to be long-term ramifications. I think we might have the the other two Spider-Men in this universe, maybe for a little, uh, just a little bit. Because going through the effort to bring them here in his third film, 
I just don't see them getting rid of them all in one movie. And I think some of the MCU versions of the villains, like Green Goblin, who we saw, we, we saw, or we heard in the trailer, uh, Doctor Octopus is in the trailer. I think they're here to stay. I think they're here to stay. I don't think they're going anywhere. And I think it follows that old, you know, rule of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, why go through the trouble of recreating the Green Goblin and Doc Ock, and you know, when you've already got a perfect Green Goblin and a perfect Doc Ock from the Raimi movies, bring them in. And maybe they're not fully the Raimi characters, maybe they're variants of the Raimi characters, or variants of the characters in the universe, like w which we saw from Loki. Also, Electro is in the trailer. You see he doesn't have blue lightning anymore, he has his classic yellow lightning. You can see it in like the sandstorm, I don't know if that's Sandman. Um, and most people would say it might just be the weather. But with the way this trailer's set up, it could very well be Sandman. You never know now. Like, anything anything and everything is on the table now for this movie. This movie is going to be mad. It's going to be absolutely nuts. Like, this, this, this is going to be bigger than Endgame. I'm calling it now because this... Endgame was built up over 10 years. This has been building since the early 2000s. Like, this goes way back, even to what to, to casual fans who aren't MCU nuts, but they like your staples, like your, your Su Spider-Man or your Superman and Batman from DC. You know, they like your staple characters. And everyone has a soft spot for Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. Everyone. Because that's one, one, of the, one of the godfathers of the superhero movies. Those, Blade, X-Men, you know, that they were the ones that started it all. They were the ones that allowed us to have what we have now. So, you know, don't be surprised if this surpasses even endgame levels of stuff. Because a great point was made in my stream yesterday. How do you top Iron Man snapping? How do you top Cap wielding Mjolnir? This is it. This is the only way you can. This is the only way. And the amount of chills I got hearing Green Goblin's laugh, like that's Willem Dafoe. As the pumpkin bomb is rolling across the motorway, that is Willem Dafoe. So, there's also the potential of Lizard, when Peter's standing there and something smacks a force field. It, saw, it could be Venom, maybe, but I don't see why Venom would be doing that. Like, it just doesn't feel organic. So, it probably could be Lizard. Um, so I, I said it might be Scorpion, but I think Lizard's probably a safer bet. And I just think we're going to see a multitude of villains from you know, Raimi universe, from Garfield universe, and Holland's universe, all colliding in one. Now, Multiverse Sinister Six, that's what's coming up. How many characters make it into that, that remains to be seen. I think uh, the safe bet, and what I was kind of thinking, was Doc Ock is going to be like the Tony of the team. He's going to be the one upgrading the gear, um, giving them the improvements, and basically being the brains of the team. Very similar to the Spider-Man PS4 game very similar green goblin is going to be your aerial attack scorpion which we know has been set up from the previous two spider-man movies and vulture and Ele and uh, shocker shocker vulture and and scorpion have been set up in the previous two tom holland spider-man movies so they are going to be in this for sure and they're going to be a key component and we know that you know, Vulture is in the Morbius trailer at the end, so he'll be involved in that. But I don't think Morbius will have much to do with Spider-Man yet. I think Morbius might be more of a backdoor for people like Blade um, and to introduce that vampire world. And then, of course, we've got Electro from the Amazing Spider-Man uh, world, which, I mean, I think we can all agree, you know, as much as I love Max Dillon and his classic design, I think Jamie Foxx, single, like, he, he, he gave the character of Electro some badass qualities like he's sick like i mean i know some people are a bit yeah about it but i i like i like jamie fox's electro i think it's a new take um you know it, it is changing the character um but it worked it worked for the movie they were doing and i think with everything that's at stake in this movie peter cannot fight these guys alone like even S toby and and andrew struggled against these guys one-on-one -on -one. so the scene when he's on the bridge and he suits up, it could be a misdirect, it could be a different scene. But just imagine this, as Doc Ock approaches him, you have a shot of Peter, right, just Peter, and you have all the six villains just looking at him. That is wallpaper material right there. Now, the reason I didn't say Lizard is part of the group, just because I feel like there will be some characters from the movies that we maybe see in a one-off appearance, or we see um, briefly, but... The long-term ramifications of this of this movie is, I don't think 
the characters like right so the characters that are being brought over green goblin electro doc ock maybe lizard you don't need to give them origin stories in the mcu you can just keep those you can just keep those and i think some will call it lazy but i think it's actually quite it's 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 cunning. I call it cunning. It's using something that we all know and care about because it relates to Andrew. It relates to Toby. It, it, it makes it feel more connected. And when we go back and watch Amazing Spider-Man 2, we'll be like, hmm, well, we'll see you in a couple of years, Electro, when you're fighting in the multiverse. Or when we see Green Goblin die in the first Spider-Man film, we're like, well, <laughs> you're showing up again. Or Doc Ock when he's sinking in the... I mean, I don't know how I feel about this one personally. Um, the Doc Ock one is a little bit, you know, like he, 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 I've, I've often said I don't like when characters die with redemption because I feel like it's a waste, but for his arc, it worked and it was an emotional, uh, uh, story bit there. So I don't know how I feel with them taking Doc Ock from that exact moment and, and, you know, like it just, I don't know, to have him be a villain after that, like, uh, I don't know, you, you, mm, you gotta, gotta give me some nuance for that, but, um, I just feel like a lot of these characters are here to stick around and eventually but I, I don't even think by the end of this movie that it's going to be solved I think this multiverse problem is going to be the biggest thing of the next phase it's not going anywhere because we know we got Kang coming in so I think it's 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 all within the realm of possibility that the next big like Avengers level event maybe not not quite Endgame but maybe like <sighs> Age of Ultron level ish you could even ha it could even get to the point where you have the three Spider-Men, you have Doctor Strange, you have the Avengers, you know, you have characters from across the multiverse fighting Kang. Like it, it, it could get to that level. We're definitely going the Secret Wars route. There is a lot of seeds that are now planted for that. A lot of seeds, and I think with the way multiverse is being incorporated, I expect a multiverse war. I expect that absolutely, one hundred percent. I don't think these multiverse characters are going anywhere anytime soon. And let's say for argument's sake, we fast forward to the end of this multiverse uh, situation. We fast forward. I can see a world where Peter goes back to his world, Andrew goes back to his world. The villains are here to stay. I, I, can, I can honestly see a world where the villains don't go back home. I, I honestly see that. I think there is a lot of potential to keep them within the MCU. And I think there's a lot they can do with it. And it just saves them the hassle of just, you know, giving every character an origin story when you can bring over the characters we already have an emotional attachment to and they're related to things that we all care about and you can amplify it. You know, I mean, seeing Green Goblin throw a pumpkin bomb and the laugh, that just sent chills right down my spine seeing Dr. Octopus, you know, it's just with this new version of Peter, you know, and no doubt Peter's going to get down and out because how the like, and it, it's not because he's weak it's because these six characters or the, the villains that are going to be in this movie are overpowered as hell so he's going to be down and out then you know andrew and toby come and help him and then the three of them fight them together that's two villains per spidey you know and then you could have lots of like we're going to get norman osborne and otto octavius working together we could get michael keaton's you know vulture with jamie fox's electro like there's a lot of possibility there and I can't wait. And, you know, I don't know if... I mean, Doctor Strange is in the movie. Whether he helps the Spider-Men in the final battle, that remains to be seen. Because he, if we're being completely transparent, Doctor Strange could handle them quite, you know, relatively easy, easily. Just throw them back in the dimension. You know, it's... It, it'll be done with them in seconds. So, I think maybe they might give Doctor Strange something else to do to keep him occupied. Meanwhile, Peter, or Peters, have to go and fight the, um, the Sinister Six. The Multiverse Sinister Six. But guys and girls, comment your thoughts and theories down below. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. And again, welcome to the new subscribers to this channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome one and all. And yeah, like, you know, it's a shame the trailer got leaked. But I'm not surprised, you know. with the Normally I would be pissed that it got leaked in the first place. Um, because when things have been leaked for Cobra Kai or whatever, I usually flip out. But we have had barely next to no information for this movie. And... I'm starting to think that maybe they're not holding back on giving us the mo uh, the mo uh, trailers because they don't want to. It's because this trailer alone, this was a teaser. Look at how much we got in this movie uh, trailer. We got a lot. That's a lot. That's that's enough to carry a movie. Peter fighting Doctor Octopus and Green Goblin while working with Doctor Strange. 
Like that, that, and Electro, that, and fighting Electro, that is enough to carry a movie. So imagine that, this is for the teaser. Imagine what the actual full trailer is going to be. Like, I could honestly see a world where you see the full trailer, the full trailer, and they don't reveal Toby and Andrew. What they do is maybe they show silhouettes, and we're like, ah, and they save their actual appearances for the actual movie, because that, that's got to be protected. That is the endgame portals moment. That needs to be protected. What you could do is you could potentially have maybe flashbacks of Andrew's run or Toby's run. You know, you could really play it like an endgame level event kind of thing. You could really do that. But anyway, guys and girls, jump in the comments section down below. Let me know what you thought. And again, thank you to everyone who tuned into the live stream last night. It was it was a blast, man. It was great. A great time. A lot of great fun. And it was, uh, yeah, man. Web slinging fun. Man, I can't wait for this movie. I can't wait for this movie. And I think, he's just on a quick side note, he's going to be wearing different suits when he's fighting different villains. Like, I think the black and gold suit is probably going to be elect electro-resistant. Maybe the Infinity War suit, uh, like the nanotech one. Like, he's going to be using his instant kill, uh, like, claws, if you will, um, to be fighting Dr. Octopus's arms, all that kind of stuff. But I can see a scene where Peter maybe tries to take all of them on, and he gets completely overwhelmed. Sort of like in the Spider-Man PS4 game, when the Sinister Six, you know, you've got Mr. Negative, um, you've got Rhino, you've got Scorpion... You've got uh, Electro, you've got Vulture, and you've got Doc, uh, Dr. Octopus all fighting Peter at the same time. And he tries to fight, he tries to swing, and he's trying to swing for them all, but he goes down because there's too many. I can see a similar thing like that where he just gets swarmed. And it's not because he's weak, it's because these guys are so pa overpowered. Like, how are you going to fight? Like, all the Spider-Men have struggled to fight at least the one of these guys at least once. So... Imagine how much it's going to be for him with all the tech he has. Like, it's he'll be overwhelmed. And then, you know, you've got Pete, you've got Tom, Toby, and Andrew. Just saying. You've got the Fantastic Three. Guys and girls, I'll see you all in another video soon. We are marching forward to 6K subs. If you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? And if you have, then hello, Peter. <laughs>